Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Notre Dame is burning. Notre Dame. It's burning, James. It's burning. Yeah. Weird to see, right? I don't know. <laughs> you know there what I she did? Is. There she is. There's you know what? My I girl just got a, a lot of bragging about it being a huge part of people's lives because they visit so much. <laughs> and that kind of pissed me off more than the actual. Because you've never seen it. You never I've never got to seen see it. it. I've never no. been, and I know I really must go. In yeah. This, where, when? Summer, spring? What's the best really time, you guys? special. Uh, look, I love Paris in the springtime. That's just me. Sure. Just and me. you've gone a couple <laughs> times. Yeah, and you've gone to Cannes and stuff. So, you know, that, that was just a lot of it, is people kind of th- showing their pictures yeah. of them there. A lot of pictures. A lot of pictures, a couple people, and a, a famous person that I actually love um, put up a bunch of pictures of his kid playing around there. Sure. And, um, oh, it was just such a huge part of their life. <laughs> and, um, gosh, to see it burning, it's just like memories of how amazing their trips have been. trips Yeah. Multiple? Yep. Um, every, every year, some of them, every year we go. Yep. Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, that sucks and they will definitely build it back up again because they're rich and stuff and like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's good that, uh, your outpouring of sympathy has really Did anybody get taken hurt? over you. Did anybody uh, get hurt? No, actually, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly, no. But look, there was, you know. 1200 it was built 1250 years ago and yeah. i like in under two minutes i mean you just completely pull your pants down and take a shit all over it <laughs> look so that's good and i like that about i never you. been i've never seen it yeah, yeah and yeah, even yeah. if yeah. i did it'd be like oh cool where's the like <laughs> i'm very much like that right no i do like i do i do like old architecture as opposed to like a museum where you're showing me something that's 1,200 years old. How yeah, much was it? 1,250 years old. So, but the architecture I do love. And in all seriousness that, you know, it is crazy. It that is. That I, is going down. It was strange to see. When I first saw it, I thought of 9-11, actually. I thought this couldn't be happening to this famous structure. So, Because to me, you know, when you go to Paris... There's that, uh, and there's the Eiffel Tower. Again, well, no. I, I don't know. But that's the, that's the two things. So, like, New York, same way. Oh, okay. I would have thought so it would be that, World Trade Center, right. Empire State Building, or sure. the Statue of Liberty. Like, that's the three biggest landmarks, you know, when sure. you're flying over here. Same thing flying over there, where you're just like, holy shit. I thought, for sure, it was terrorist. Oh, really? Easter week? Just, I mean, they had uh, Palm sure, Sunday. Sure, sure. Uh, obviously, so what did Notre it? Dame is uh, is a mm-hmm. Catholic church. So right. I thought, all right, it was Palm Sunday. Uh, right. It was Holy the day week. after Holy yeah, Week. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Easter's coming up. I thought for sure. I was like, all right, this is some form of terrorist attack. Because there was a, I don't know if you remember this, a couple of years ago, there was a threat by ISIS to bomb it or burn it down or whatever. So I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember when that all went down and I was just like, well, Maybe they're they're coming now, but then when I saw the, you know, the images on the news with the platforms and everything else, I didn't yeah. know they were doing like a you know twenty two million dollar renovation. You can go ahead and probably bump that number up a couple a couple of dollars um, after after yesterday, obviously. But they Do are going to be able to save it. Some kind of insurance on that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, look, you're also dealing with art pieces and things that were 1250 years old. I mean, you're looking at hundreds of millions of dollars potentially, you know, uh, they're able to save the towers, but you know, obviously the, the big, the big piece is gone in the middle. Right. Um, but look, they'll be able to rebuild from what I understand. Uh, cause the first thing I was thinking of was what happened to that crown of thorns. Right. They were able to save that at least. So, 
and that was the actual that's thing. been a that, that's been a debate so the crown of thorns you know that, that jesus wore mm-hmm. you know during all of that uh-huh. uh they can trace it back to jerusalem they can trace it back to that time period and around that area okay. so that's the closest thing they have um but you know to verify that i'm not really sure how you would but everybody's pretty much acknowledged that yeah that it is the original and and that's where it lies so they were able to save that i didn't know now would you get pawn stars over there or how do you I, look i didn't know it was in that church because i i find it odd that uh that it's in paris versus jerusalem right so i look i don't know the timeline or or the who's and what's of it but uh you know yeah that would be a that would be a fun pawn stars episode right yeah, yeah, you just bring in the crown of thorns. You know, I got a guy. <laughs> it's the I got, I got a guy. Right? He's uh, Methuselah. Mm-hmm. I got a guy, Methuselah, who lives out in Reno. And that crotchety, the crotchety grandpa will be sitting there. Oh, yeah, that's oh, not Methuselah. really it. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Just bring in that crown of thorns. Mm-hmm. Methuselah, we're going to drive on out to Reno. I'm going to call, I'm going to give him a ring out in Reno. Right. And he's right. in some trailer park, and he's like, "Yeah, that's a real crown of thorns, man." I didn't think, I didn't, I didn't believe you had it, Ron, or whatever yeah. your name is, Chumley, yeah, yeah Chumley. Chumley, Chumley, yeah. So, but yeah, prayers and stuff, prayers and, prayers stuff. and, and stuff, and, and, and I so think somebody I'm who's been overlooked, no heard and- I think somebody who's been overlooked in all of this is uh, Quasimodo. So I really want to, if we're sending out prayers, James, right? I'm kind of. I saw a lot of, I saw a couple of posts that were like prayers. We've shortened it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mean thoughts and prayers is too much? Yep. Too much time. Hashtag prayers. Hashtag prayers, right? Right. So, you know. I don't know what. They're okay. My thing is this. What what are you praying for in in a situation like this? Nobody was hurt. Mm -hmm. Clearly it was an accident. You know, I, yeah, it's going to get rebuilt. So I, you know sucks in the meantime but right. nobody nobody died from this you know like right. then you're sending out prayers let's send out prayers to something else and how did this start do we know that we don't okay you know i look it could have been a cigarette that's not i'm gonna guess france construction workers i'm gonna say lit cigarette huh. that's how that's that's the route i'm gonna go with that interesting yeah okay yeah. Because when they don't have something immediately where it's like, all right, it's not terrorism or whatever. They'll, look, they'll have a cause of this fire yeah. come out in the next couple of days because yeah. we're, we're doing this pretty much as the story is happening. But uh, we're recording the show. They'll have a they'll have something. They'll be like, well, you know, Jean. Jean put out a cigarette. Jean van Saint, Saint Jean. Yeah. During his three hour lunch right? break. And uh, yeah, just kind of during his nap. They do that out. there, right? Yeah, I think so. Look, again, they'll be okay. Yeah. And I'm sure by the time I ever get to go, it'll be back to normal. No, and I don't think you will. Yeah. I don't think you will, James. It's really a special don't. place. It is a special place that only a, a small percentage of people uh, get to go. Yeah, and I understand that. And yeah. so for those small percentage of people that are really saddened by this <laughs> uh, vacation spot of theirs getting... Um, Burnt, burnt. Yeah. a little bit burnt on the top, on yeah. the top part only. You know, I do. I feel bad for you. <laughs> oh boy, James. But I'm, I got, you know, I'm busy. What's up? No, what I else get it. Is up? A lot of ray, <laughs> just a ray of sunshine today. You're just, are you walking on it right now? Because it, it seems like you're walking on sunshine right now. <laughs> Not even concerned about quasi. Hello, Moto. Oh, yeah. Not I even know. concerned about quasi Moto or anything. I'm sorry. Yeah. So- sorry about it. If Paula Dean's house would have fucking caught fire, you would have lost all of your shit. Paula Dean. Yeah. The Savannah, that place. Yeah. yeah. Mothers and daughters or something yeah i, I don't sons just, mother and sons sounds like you're just picking out john mayer songs at this point mother but. mother and son or something mother and three sons ah. the mother the three sons and the mother you bet yeah. something like that she has in savannah uh-huh she yeah. has a, a cool little restaurant out there don't know the name i don't remember it no but no, no, um no. love it yeah yeah <laughs> oh gosh and um now yeah if that burnt down it would be like oh you know, you'd be sad. I'd be sad. Yeah, I'd be sad. What happened to you that you were out of fucks today? 
Like what? What? <laughs> where? Know. Where did it turn? I know it was. It it was the pictures. It was the pictures on people's Instagram. Yeah, of them taking their vacays out there and how special it. You know how special it was to Look, them. It, in all fairness, it's. It's a tourist. You know I hate it's anything. a tourist destination. Yeah, and you know I hate anything that trends, right? Yeah. No, if you can't more than stand one it. person does it, <laughs> nope. I get real annoyed by I it. I know you do. I know you Again, do. Again, and that's why it's hard for me to post because I get so in my head. I'm like, what fucking bullshit am I doing right now? What bullshit am I doing? I'm surprised because you're on Instagram a lot. And you yeah, only have I'll like a hundred friends. So like I'll look at you're just it. looking at the same oh, that I follow over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, is strange. Just looking at mm. <laughs> What do you mean? It's strange. I just I just check in. I check in on 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 my peak. I think about it this way. Because I follow, I don't know, maybe four or five hundred people or mm-hmm. companies or whatever it is, right? On Instagram. Right. I have to follow that many or else looking at it, it, I would just be staring at the same shit over and over and over again. Yeah. And maybe that's what it is. I need to br- broaden it. Yeah. Because I think in your group, your, whoever you're following, I it's, get, the same it's the same photos thing. and the know. same boomerang. I think that's probably why I'm so pissed about the boomerang or the kids pictures or yeah. the, you know, the pictures of your France trip. <laughs> you know or my friend went to disney with her kids i mean you know when the story is a dot yeah just dot looks like braille it looks like braille on instagram those i pass right by i, can't, I can't get into will that either, not yeah. go second by second through your day no but a little a couple of check-ins hey out we out here yeah a couple we of out pop-ins. here we doing it a sure. couple of pop-ins a three-story day for me, I can do, right? <laughs> also on Facebook, you're the girl who watches those videos that just keep going. That piss me off. I know. Endlessly, and I just piss a- a- in a row over and over and over off. again. It's crazy. Yeah, I do it to myself. Yeah, oh yeah. I do it. I do all of this to myself, you guys. Nobody's doing it to me. No. You know, nobody's b- bird boxing me, okay? No. I open the phone, right? Yeah. I open the app. You open your eyes. I open my eyes yeah. myself. I open the app. I swipe. I press. I tap. <laughs> tap here. I sw- swipe up. Yeah. You know, I do all those things myself. You do, James. No, but he does it to me. No, no. So all when I bitch yourself. about it, it's like, shut the fuck up, right? Yeah. Because you do it. You look at it. Yeah, it's you. You know, it's you. That's why I wonder, like, where where this hatred came from. It's like, oh, again, you follow a hundred people. What is the saying? Post the right, same pictures. We hate most in others what we dislike in ourselves. Yeah, right. There it is. So that's, that's you. probably what it is. It's probably what it is. It's probably what it is. It's got to be right. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. So for me personally, you know. World Trade Center had a different meaning because there was a bunch of people working in there. Like that was an, that, that was, was offices like an every day. Yeah, it was a terrorist okay. attack. That was this an one, attack. Like this one was an accident and nobody died. Yeah, uh, nobody you know, was hurt. It's a tourist attraction. Sure, it'll be fine. But yeah. uh, you know, they said, they was, said for the most the part week. they can rebuild it. It's the week too. I know it's the Holy Week. I don't want to shit on anyone's religion or how they yeah. you know hold that place. In high regard, but you know the Easter Bunny will still come. Boy, James, we we've got to get out of this. Whatever <laughs> this is, this is just down. Tr- I mean, the next step is like, man, uh, <laughs> I, had, I had a flat tire in '93 that really yeah. affected me. I'm not even. I, I'll, I'll, I'm going to turn this into a positive here. Okay, get us out of this. <laughs> okay. Uh, there was a dog that was found. Oh. 135 miles out at sea swimming. That I that was the most amazing story I saw yesterday. Dang. Yeah. And they, they were like, hey, it was off the coast of Thailand. God. And I was like, well. And he just like was dog like, paddling. Yeah, we can't figure out why the dog swam 135 miles off the, that's what they're trying to figure out now. Because an oil tanker picked it up. Oh, God. And I was like, well, if it came from Thailand, it's pretty clear. Like, that dog was probably going to be cooked and served to a family of, of, of eight over there. Sure. And the dog and was like, escaped. I'm out. Yep. And he escaped. That's the real bravery oh, that's going on I today. I love that. 135 I also, miles. I do love the Marine that finished the marathon mm. crawling super fast, too. 
I know. Like he was ahead, so he was able to, you know. Yeah. But I guess his knees were, I mean, killing him, killing him, killing him. And towards the end, the pain was so unbearable, he crawled across the finish line. I know. It was, it, that was incredible. Incredible. On his own. And you see, you see a lot of stories like that where you're like, man, I, I, I've never ran a marathon. Right. We've talked about it. I, I want to do it one time just to say that I did it. Right. But I have no idea what that pain is and, and what everybody's going through. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, I mean, it but just, watching your body it, I was just, just like, holy shit. I think Rudy down. Reyes did it. Oh, I'm t- he did it without training and fucking an hour 20. Yeah, I'm sure he did. I'm right? Sure he, did. <laughs> he just, I think, just did one. I, I think he did the Boston Marathon. Uh, did he? It appeared. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Um, if you know, if you haven't heard that Rudy Reyes episode on, on the Sister Show Drinking Bros podcast, give that a listen. Uh, that guy can do anything. I just get more and more intrigued by him. Uh, and his his whole life and his everything whole else. Shit, his whole thing. Great dude. Uh, yeah. Super. Super great. Super I, positive. I, I don't know. I appreciate people with a different entirely different view and outlook on life that I will never have yes. in this life. Yes. And that's what fascinates me the most. So a lot of people ask me all the time why I do, you know, I think between this and Drinking Bros, I do seven shows a week, right? I'm endlessly fascinated by people, by things, what's going on, and the, the quest to be inspired by something. When I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago, I, I, didn't, I don't know what to make of it, but, you know, his outlook on life and whatever world he's in is incredible. And yeah. I, I like people would kill for that kind of happiness and peace, self peace. And it's, it's nuts, man. I don't know how to achieve it. I don't know how I look. I, I, my simple thing that I've dialed it down to is one thing. And I don't, I don't know if it's correct, which is money. Right. So if you have endless money, right. Does that bring eternal happiness of like, I, I just don't give a fuck about anything else. Cause that's, when that's kind of seemingly all you're chasing, because a lot of people are chasing other things, right? The perfect boyfriend, the perfect spouse, kids, whatever, right? Friends. I feel like I have all that where you're like, man, if there was endless money, boy, I think I would just be well, the that- happiest guy on the face of the planet. Whereas Rudy Reyes, it's a different story for him where he's chasing other things on a day by day basis, like, you know the perfect workouts or how to be spiritually connected to yourself throughout that day mm-hmm. and things like that. We are just mm-hmm. like, man, those are not my thoughts today. <laughs> well, it's endless money or it's endless time, right? Yeah. And so he has time. I'm not sure how, but he has it. Well, he's Whether single. he's pared his life down. He's also single. He's single. Yeah. His, you know, kids are with moms and things like this. Right. So whatever you think of all of that, but he has pared his life down to, a backpack, no shirt. Ever. Never needs a shirt. Nope. So you can just check that off the list of stuff you need to strive for, right? Yeah. Pants. You know, showering, I doesn't I don't think is something that he Not takes a, a lot of time. So time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He just has time and that is a different kind of richness, which is like money allows you that, right? Right. So we want money so we can have more time. He just cut all of that out and just got a bunch of time somehow. I'd kill to have Rudy back on this, sh- oh I, like God. on this show, because it, it, that was one of the craziest. I think ninety it was ninety minutes, maybe longer. I don't know yeah, how long that awesome. interview was, but it, it was awesome. nuts. But I saw the picture of him at the Boston Marathon, um, and then that guy crawling across the finish, and you're like, man, uh, if you like now, that's something where you know that that bombing that happened there, or whatever. Now that's a real tragedy. That's you know. Absolutely. Hashtag prayers. Absolutely. The church burning is sad, but it's not, you know, nobody got hurt and everybody's fine. Have you been up? Have you been to Boston yet? No. Oh, okay. No. Would love to go. I'd start there before maybe heading out to France, you know? Give that a look see. Yeah, no, I'm never going to France. <laughs> and that ship has sailed. <laughs> I've had a couple opportunities and they all, you know, don't work out again. Keeping it positive. I would go to Boston. I want to run a marathon. What I liked about the guy crawling over the finish line is we didn't let some other dude carry him. Yeah. You know, I hate that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I hate that. You shit. hate the standing outside the fire video by Garth Brooks, where the dad helps the the handicapped kid across the finish line. Is that now what you're that's saying? okay? Right. I don't like another grown man who's doing fine in the race. Sure, lift up. Uh, you know, a guy that fell or something and carrying him across the finish line for that. That is more for the guy carrying than it is for the guy being carried. Right. Can you imagine that being the guy cradled like a baby <laughs> across the thing? Like to me, that's so like, let him fucking crawl like that was like, fuck. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Because that was about him. It's not going to be about the guy who stopped. He was about to win and he stopped and piggybacked that grown man <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> he put on a Bjorn and he just carried that baby across, you know? Yeah. Because then that's just like, yeah. I mean, thanks, I guess. No, it's I, I, was, like, I was happy to see it. I was happy to see that guy I finish on his own. I that where it was like, Same. I'm going to do it and I'm going to be the only hero in this story, right? Yeah. I'm going to be my own hero. Yeah. No, it's great. And uh, look, Boston uh, around that time is magical because they always have the, the, the marathon. There's usually a Red Sox game afterwards. And then uh, if the Bruins are in the postseason, which they are now, um, you know, it's a sports mecca in Boston. I, lo- I love Boston. Uh, yeah. I've been there a few times, man. I, I would love to go back uh, to Fenway during a game. Cause we, oh, yeah. I, I shot a TV show there, but and we got to shoot inside Fenway, but there was no game going on. It was in January, and it was cold as hell. Oh yeah, I don't want to go when it's cold. No, no, you want to um, go when it's like springtime and like yeah. yeah. I would run that marathon. You just have to qualify. You do, so and, you and have I to think, run another one. Yeah, first. But, but they're very, it's specific. I believe it's uh, you have to run under a certain time period in New York or Chicago. To qualify for Boston. Well, you you can run in any qualifying race. So if marathons will say whether they're qualifiers. Yeah, but I think the qualifiers for Boston are New York or Chicago, I believe. So eh, give it a peek. Cease. Is that does that work? No, no, not no, for that. Not, not, not at all. for that. Not but um, marathons will say whether they're Boston qualifiers or not. There's a few other ones. Is there? Mm-hmm. Okay. You it's a they're bigger. You can't little marathons everywhere that's what i'm saying you can't those are not qualifiers but there is some bigger ones all over that will say that they're uh boston qualifiers so it's like makes it more you know prestigious yeah more desirable to run because you're like okay well at least you know this could get me into boston something you want to do um i kind of thought new york but Maybe Boston would be cooler. Boston's the look. That's the look. I haven't run one, so that we are way ahead of ourselves. You could but, though. You could. You. Could, I think you're so you're one of those people more, who could get up and just do it. Like maybe a I week training. I Think I could, but that's so ridiculous to say. I think I could get up and run a half marathon for sure, because you know I could just get up and run ten. Yeah, I've seen you. So do I it know already. I could run just thirteen, but. Yeah. A full marathon again, that's what happens at the end with this guy. Your body literally shuts down. If you don't train, (laughs) if you don't hydrate, you could mentally all you want be able to get there, right? But your body will be like, no, this isn't really what we do. Right. This isn't our thing, right? Yeah. You're supposed to train me a little bit better for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, unless you're Rudy Reyes. So you're saying Boston's more... Prestigious. Okay. That's the big one. His, that's the big one. It is. All right. Yeah. Then yeah, and I would have no problem. And with I would know that because we did a show about it. So I'm not even going to pretend like I'm some fucking marathon expert. But uh, we did a TV show on it, and that was the uh, okay. that was the one where it was that just was like, the all right, Boston. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So New York was a. I remember New York was a qualifier for it, and then okay. uh, I, I, Chicago was. I'm not sure if Los Angeles was. What I can tell you is, I got caught in that marathon in L.A. when we were out there. Oh, L.A. Marathon. Yeah. Boy. That's a no. It's weird. It's just a, it's just a show one. Yeah. And it, the a marathon's a marathon. A marathon's a marathon, but the conditions in L.A., yeah. I mean, could not be more perfect and amazing between air quality, elevation. It was elevation. 75 Ugh. and sunny there, Ugh. and uh, people were out in it. Perfect. I got stuck in that traffic, and I was like, shit. I walked down because I was going to the gym and I walked down the Hollywood Boulevard and all of that was shut down. 
Oh, and yeah. there's just thousands of people. And I mean, it was yeah. just knocking over shit. The weird thing I, I found about marathons is like, there's just strangers holding cups of water or whatever. Like what's to stop anyone just from coming up with a cup of vodka and just handing that out to somebody just to see their reaction of like, Imagine taking a gigantic gulp of vodka. Oh, about, like on the sidelines, they're just yeah, holding about, up about water. twelve miles in. Yeah, so it's strangers, and you're oh. like, and you run by, and everybody's so trusting of it. We were like, cool, and I would like, I'm right by the rope, so at this point, I'm like, man, I could be. No, I wouldn't take something. it. I wouldn't take it unless it was the actual <laughs> like stops that they have. <laughs> Fuck no. It was wild. Not this day and age. No. Not this day and age. It was wild, wasn't it? You got to be pessimistic. You really okay? do. I, you really do. That, and I know you're getting down on me for it, but you have to. I know. I'll, look, since we're going down that road today, I'll be pessimistic with you. That fucking mall story fucked me up yesterday. Oh, I don't want to go down that road. That was a crazy one, man. A guy walked into the Mall of America, if you haven't heard this story, he had in cased Minneapolis. He the joint for a while, but yeah. He cased the joint for a while, was banned f- from it for a year, and uh, walks in, said he was trying to kill uh, an adult, and then just grabbed a five-year-old and chucked him off, what was it, three stories? Yep. Uh, third story of the Mall of America. Mm. Um, he's charged with attempted murder. Man, I, 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 there's a lot of words I have. What ended up happening for this one? So the guy, I, I guess no, he had had kid. a conversation. The kid's in the hospital, critical okay. condition. Um, but I, you know, the the, I guess the he had told the mom that he was had tried to kill an adult, and that didn't work out. Um, and then just picked up the kid and, and threw it off the balcony. But like um, inside the Mall of America, I mean, imagine all the people that were shocked that had to see that and everything else. I mean. Mm. Jesus Christ. The, the death penalty isn't strong enough for somebody like that. Um, I think you got you to gotta go old school and uh, tourniquet them up, cut off individual portions of their toes, feet, hands, all of that stuff. Keep them alive as long as possible so they feel every last second of that. And then, uh, you know, maybe bl- blowtorch it so it kind of heals back up and then keep going. Whatever the strongest form of torture is for a human like that, that's what, that's what I uh, I want to happen. I I almost think, and, and this might be controversial. I almost think you don't even report things like that on the news. And I'll tell you why. Yeah, There's, because there is debate. Over I don't that. even. I didn't even know. I, I've never even heard of something like this in my entire life. I don't even want to know that that's a possibility now that that has entered mm-hmm. my mind that I have to even mm-hmm. concern myself with when I go out with my children that somebody might try to pick up my child and throw or them a off Disney a building or, or anywhere. You know, again, Mall of America. This is like tourist, right? Anywhere, yeah. The Mall of America is like the tourist haven, right? I mean, that's pretty much the only place you can go in Minneapolis unless you're going to see Prince's house. But uh, yeah, I, I when I saw that story, part of me wishes they had not reported it uh, yeah i don't it even want to hear about really weird i was kind of like what i mean my kids were at the table and we're hearing about this and then we hear about a witness that was talking about the little legs all i remember is the little legs like yeah dude 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 yeah i had to change it yeah only because it was like the questions then are like oh like he's five so oh, someone my age you, right you changed the channel and then what happened was is you know Later on that night, I went back to read the story. I was like, maybe there was something I'm missing here. Maybe there yeah. were, there was disputes or, you know, no, it, it was a complete and utter stranger who just walked in, grabbed this kid and threw him off the third floor. And when I saw that, I was just like, man, I don't, you know, people are like, oh, he had mental issues or whatever. I, I don't I don't even give a fuck about that. So it's like this group of terrorists. Do you know? Uh, do you remember that Santa Barbara boy? Didn't get girls. Yeah. No girls talked to him, yep. whatever, and yeah. just went on a rampage. This is a, it is a group, a terrorist group that are basically men that don't get any women, women yeah. in any form and, and get shunned by women um, constantly. And, you know, this is when prostitution needs to like come into play right like or whatever i don't know 
I don't know, man. I, if you're making that part of, I mean, your whole existence, there's obviously mental illness and things going on with that. But, you know. If your mind can't tell you what's right and wrong, throwing a, a child. Absolutely. A I mean, listen. I, I don't even want, I don't want to hear about your mental illness. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. want to hear about any of it. I don't give oh, a fuck. Oh, no, you should be dead. Yeah. I, I, I do not care. You should be dead. Yeah. And, but I, and they I think get the parents, kind of riled up in these groups. Yeah. They're all they're banding together. They have a group of people that are behind them. This is what we need to do. You know? Yeah. Well, look, w- w- run what vans I think, into groups of girls and yeah. kill f- fucking women or whatever. What I think should happen is that wh- whoever the mom is and the parents of this child, I wish that they had the option to pick out whatever the worst form of torture was oh. and then execute that in a public forum. Yeah. That would be incredible to me. Yeah. Uh, not going to happen, obviously. No. There'll be some long bullshit trial. A dude will get life in, in jail and, you know, it'll be forgotten about in 30 days or, you know, when the story pops back up. But uh, Jesus Christ, man, seeing that. Um, we'll turn it around, though. I, look, there was a movie that came out over the weekend. Coachella happened. Uh, yeah. Road By the way, to Coachella, yes. You know what's funny? We did. I think our second episode was called "Are You Going to Coachella?" Yeah. It exploded last week, and I was like, "Oh, what the fuck is this?" I guess Logan Paul wrote a song called "Are You Going to Coachella?" Stop. Yeah, and they both popped up together. It was pretty funny. That's and, uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we talked about that. Episode, Are you going to thing. Coachella? Yeah, and that was the exact name of our episode. So. Um, both of those were connected, I guess, on iTunes. Vincent pretty funny. Marcus put up a pretty funny post of him with a bunch of flowers in a field saying, I'm here at Coachella. Where is everybody? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just him just like spinning around like, well, the weird thing where is, is it? We out here. Yeah. The weird thing is I, like I, your Notre Dame picks are probably my Coachella picks where I, I've saw, you know, a shit ton of my friends at Coachella, but. Now they all have like professional photographers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what part of Coachella they're in because I don't recognize anything in the background. So it's like, hey, man, I don't because I was trying to think about this. I was like, unless you paid for a ticket for your private photographer to come into Coachella with you. Do you do? Huh? Mm. Okay. Um, but why not do it in, like in front of the stage so people know where you're at? Because like with Vincent Marcus, this thing was hilarious, but he was in a field. He wasn't anywhere near Coachella. No, right. But that's what everybody else's pictures look like. Where I'm like looking at all my friends, like, where I'm like, "Hey, are you there?" Yeah, I, it, it appears as if you're you somewhere get, by there, but it, it doesn't look like you're inside of Coachella. You can't get by the stage. You know that. You can. You can walk. Look, it's not going to be a good pick. I'll tell you that. Between groups, you can, you know, between bands, you can absolutely yeah, get in there. That's true. But uh, the headliners over the weekend were um, uh, Tame Impala, which nobody saw. No. Nope. Everybody slid over to Kid Cudi, who crushed it. We watched that live stream. Um, Kid Cudi's incredible, man. It's crazy. I didn't realize how long he's really been around. Yeah. And like just different and awesome and. Crushed his performance. I I didn't hear one word about Tame Impala, but Kid Cudi stole the show on Saturday night, and good for him. Uh, that du- Pursuit of Happiness remix. Boy. I mean, you can't. If to close I out was, your set, yeah. Oh my gosh. I if mean, I was on Pure MDMA, which I would be there. Yeah. And that song came on. I mean, the height that I would try to be jumping, right? <laughs> and th- the height that I th- would think I was actually getting to yeah. would be insane. I would only be getting like an inch off the ground. And for anybody but out gosh. there who, who's, who's listening saying, hey, James is really down today. She's, she's going hard after a lot of people, including Coachella. You, no. were, you were on stage. Do you remember that? You yeah, were on for stage. Girl Talk, yeah. for sure. <laughs> You've been on stage I said at if Coachella. I was there, the... The amount of craziness I would be going <laughs> is insane. Yeah. Oh, I went crazy for the Tupac thing. I got on stage. I did all the things. Yeah, I've yeah, done yeah. all the things. Yeah. I was a little bit younger, but yeah. Eh, not much. A couple summers. A couple summers ago. But Donald Glover oh, wow. was the headliner Friday night. We watched some of his live stream, and then uh, he had a movie uh, yes. premiere, Guava, Guava Island. So he did the premiere the night before uh, for free at Coachella, so whoever was there could watch the movie. And then his show is the night after. And then it was on Amazon Prime. Man, I am mystified 
by how this guy is able to pass through content like this by studios. It is insane to me. I, first of all, I enjoyed it. It's only about 55 minutes if you're going to watch it. Um, first five minutes are animated, so don't turn it off. Because I got some comments where people were like, hey, man, did you watch this Donald Glover movie? I turned it off. I didn't know it was animated. The first five minutes are animated. After that, Six it's not. Credits, so just... Yeah. Stick with it. No, there's a there's a full story about the island and everything yeah, yeah, else yeah. narrated by, by I Rihanna. It. So it's him and Rihanna, and the aspect ratio is all what what is that four three it's a or square? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, three four, or whatever the fuck it is. So it's all in a square. It's shot beautifully. Looks amazing. They shot the entire thing in Cuba. My only night. I thought Rihanna was pretty decent. I, like I was. Yeah, her. Five, I was surprised. Five lines were really good. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I mean, they didn't give anybody anything to, to do, really. Like the the girl from uh, Black Panther was in mm-hmm. it, and she didn't have a lot to work with no. either. But it was basically him. It was basically an art piece for him, mm-hmm. and uh, I I did enjoy it. I don't know how he passes that by studios. I mean, fuck, you've got to be on another planet to do that these days. But you know, that guy is constantly making interesting content across the board whether it be look atlanta is one of my favorite shows yeah uh his performance at coachella was epic oh my god Uh, and i don't uh, love love his music i don't either but that performance first i was like okay do i like childish gambino yeah 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 it was, I was, it was confusing. Cause I don't throw on his music. I'm not a gigantic, like I don't wait for shit to come out. Like, uh, this, I thought this is America was a great song. Yeah. Um, but the rest of it, uh, the red bone song was great too. Okay. I mean, that was a massive, massive yeah, song, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, he's doing it across the board. It's just, you know, there's shit that I jam to and there's, you know. Right. But however he switched those songs around at. Uh, Coachella, I was like, okay, okay. And in the film. So mm-hmm. he sings live in the yeah. film. And can sing, which I never... I didn't know. I, I think that's a like new Like really, thing. really great. I, I, it, it's new. actually not new, but to sing live, because I know the difference if you're lip syncing or mm-hmm. not in a movie. The One of the hardest things you can do in, in a film is one cry, cry on cue. Not because... Of the first cry or whatever, I think everybody can get there, but it's multiple takes. Mm-hmm. Of it. And like for me, I've always used a cheat of a, of a tear stick because I know how many setups and I know what those edits are going to be. Right. And I don't want somebody to wait 20 minutes to reset and redo makeup and all that other stuff. The other is, is to sing on camera. Um, that's really, yes. really difficult live because because of your sound and those lav mics that you're wearing, it sounds shitty. So mm-hmm. it was probably boomed. But uh, and then some form of love, but to capture it live, which it was, it's really, really difficult. Right. I've only had to do it once in a movie where I asked somebody to do it. And I, ironically, it was Helen Keller versus Night Wolves. But it was a trained opera singer. Oh, yes, Jesse Merlin, yeah, who yeah, yeah. I was just like, hey, man, can you do this live? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I, I can. And it'll it'll sound good. And, you know, we had he always says that, by the way, no matter what you ask him. Yeah, yeah, I can do it. He's great. I, look, that's all you ever want from people He's in this great. life. And, you know, we set it up uh, so that there was a boom and a love and then something else on the ground. And I was like, look, just do two takes of this. I know it's it, it's hard vocally. Mm-hmm. One of these mics will catch it. Um, but he's a trained opera singer who's done, I, I think his, his resume is maybe 50, 60 operas deep, right? Donald Glover is not. Right. <laughs> So for him to be able to do that and sit down and, and pump those out, because it was about, looked like maybe three like ballads he was singing or whatever. Um, I, I, I continuously become more impressed by that, this guy, as his career unfolds. Yeah. And if you think about it, because like, I, was, I, was, I was trying to think back of when I found out about Donald Glover. Um, he's been in my face for so long for me personally, I was like, man, what, what is this? What am I missing? And there was a sketch series on YouTube that was devastating. It was called Derek, Derek comedy. Um, and it was really, really fucking good. And he was in this group, this little comedy troupe. And they used to do these awesome sketches on YouTube way back in the day. And 
I, you know, we, you and I had chatted about this the other day because all of our videos are on YouTube. Subscribe, by the way, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, whereas if I had just kept going with YouTube sketches, because my first sketch was in 2006, right when YouTube started, and it got close to a million views, which back then you were fucking famous as shit. Like, I remember getting stopped in a movie theater like two days later after that by, by people who were just like, oh my God, you're the guy from YouTube. And I was like, oh boy, that's not what I want to do. Um, now that's what everybody's doing. Right. And you're just like, Oh Jesus, am I going to kept going? But at that time I was looking for other people around YouTube that were trying to do things that I thought were cool or interesting. I only remember a couple Derek comedy, which was his comedy troupe. Mm. Um, and then, uh, uh, lonely Island. Oh yeah. Those are the other guys doing it. And I was just like, all right, cool. Uh, I remember Donald Glover getting poached to go to 30 rock. But he was just a writer, and then he would occasionally pop up okay. in things. Okay. Um, but he was there for a while, and I think he won a couple Emmys for writing. He mostly did their story editing, which is which is tough. Like that's a that's a that's a tough gig. Um, and then Community. Yeah. And look. And then that's where a lot of people know him. He kind of got into everyone's. I wasn't the most gigantic fan of Community. So no, no, but that's where everyone. I know. Kinda, yeah. But, you know, he got known from that or whatever. And then to completely switch your life and career. Because I remember when his first mixtape came out. And I was just like, that's Donald Glover. Like, it, it was all right. right. But a lot of people loved it. A right. lot of people loved it. I wasn't sold on that. And I was like, it's the dude from Community. I'm good on all this. Like, can you do a modern day switch, Drake style, from not being a teenager to, you know, an adult yeah. to becoming a singer or whatever. Like, I can name three. Drake. Him, Donald Glover, and maybe Jamie Foxx. Yeah. That's about it. Who, yeah. who made a successful transition in music? Jared Leto, probably. 30 yes. Seconds to Mars, I, I would yes. say. Yeah, yeah. But, but these are people that have been doing, that did music their whole life. So Childish Gambino was doing this before Community, before you, you know, he was always doing this. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, you just tried this out. They're like, no, I've been doing it forever. Like the acting thing for Jared <clears throat> Leto as well. Right. The acting thing was something that happened while he was trying to be in a band. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so once you get the notoriety, then you go, okay, now I can do what I really want to do. Right? Yeah. Because I have a name and whatever. Um, for Donald Glover, it seemed a little bit counterintuitive because it was like, we didn't want to see the comedian doing rap. Right. <laughs> No, and I, I didn't think it was possible. I, like, I really didn't. Yeah. Because it's so hard to, you think then, to switch because nobody takes you seriously. Yeah. You're just like, dude, You're like, is I it don't comedy rap? Yeah. Like, and it's like, no, he's being serious. You're like, oh, okay. To completely Good turn your you. career around and then, you know, do... Because this, this thing was... This 55-minute movie he put out, I, I mean, I guess it would be classified as a short film maybe, but I, I don't... Maybe I think it's anything over 45. Maybe it's a full length feature. I don't know. It was super interesting. I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know how he gets away with, with making shit like this on a studio level, but he does. And it's, it's amazing. Atlanta's amazing. Um, I, I, I wonder what this guy does next. I mean, he didn't even show up at the fucking Grammys for Christ's sakes. Mm -mm. And he was the first rap artist to ever win like best song, song of the year. But what do we think? Is it because of that guy or he just... I'm not sure. Yeah, now I don't know. I don't know. I don't know his whole story. And I, look, I read you know, some other interviews with him with the producers and they were like, he's a weird guy. We don't really know. And I'm like, all right. The other thing that I found oddly fascinating about that movie, that Guava Island over the weekend, was he had always said back in the day, he was like, um, I'm going to keep working my ass off until Rihanna knows who I am. And he had said that for years. And then all of a sudden, That's pretty funny. it is. And I don't know if that was part of it. Like, well, good for I, him. I like, I like that shit where I think he's married to somebody white, though. I'm sure. <laughs> Possibly Jewish. Now listen. <laughs> I'm sure he's an asshole. No, I don't know. I'm sure he is. I don't know. To be that creative, to get those kinds of things through... If you asked anyone, I'm sure they'd say he was a dick, right? Is he? I don't know. I don't know. But he seems to have such a specific idea of what he wants. He definitely has gotten in fights with people about it. Yeah. And you just get that sense. 
that in order to get things the way that he wanted them, cool, weird, whatever, get the cinematographer that he loves or whatever on the pro- all of these, he has to be a dick. Either way, I want to see more people out there making stuff like this. Um, I, I, the, the eternal question I get asked almost every day on social media is, why aren't you doing, why aren't you making more movies? In, in aggressive comedy, it's really, really, really tough to get things financed right now. Mm-hmm. He's not doing aggressive comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, I, 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 this was, don't think of Donald Glover, the comedian, when you watch this, because it's not a comedy whatsoever. Um, I, you know, it's a it's a drama, but uh, you know, and even Atlanta is really straddling the line between comedy and drama. I don't really know how you'd classify that. Um, some of the episodes, I, I don't even know how to classify on their own. That Teddy Pendergrass one, I, horror, like, horror, yeah, uh, suspense. I don't know. I don't either. Yeah, no. He, uh, there'll be really funny ones. There'll be dramatic. He is. He's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, He's out there. He's uh, doing it. But either way, like watching him crush Coachella and then this fucking weird movie that he puts out over the weekend, dude. The guy's living his best life. Um, I don't know why he dyed his his uh, beard blonde. By the way, it was blonde. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Saw the pictures afterwards. So I don't know why. It's kind of a yellowish. It looks like a yellow in there. It wasn't gray. No, he put a it's he put some uh, some yellow in there where you're just like oh. All right, cool. We know gray in a beard gets yellow. When? When you dye it or? No, it just get it gray in a beard gets kind this of This was yellow. dyed blonde. Huh. Yeah. Look, who knows with him? Okay. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know, but it was it was crazy. Um. <laughs> you want a little skunk stripe or something? <laughs> something fun and flirty. Just something fun, something different, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the new polls, by the way, are out. That your that Buttigieg guy is in for uh, the Democratic Party. I think we're up to fifty eight people who are now running for president on the Democratic side. And Bernie Sanders is. Did you say fifty? Fifty eight, probably. I don't. Jeez, <laughs> there's a lot of there's people. There's a lot there. of people. Um, and uh, I'm so, intrigued by this guy. I want to see where he. Yeah, thirty seven years old, uh, gay, military. Mayor of South Bend. There's a rumor that there's some tapes out there that he doesn't want out in public. I don't know what they're about or what they're for, but uh, this is this keeps popping up, so we'll see. But right now, Bernie Sanders is in the lead. Uh, the new polls have Bernie Sanders in the lead for the Democratic Party. Stop. By a lot. So, uh, or, granted, this is super early, obviously. Yeah. But he's already up by eight points over Biden. Biden's in it, too. Buttigieg, by the way who just announced is in at three. Wow. Which is surprising. So like Beto and Kamala Harris and all like, they're barely even registering at like 6%. But, but the, the Bernie's at like 29 right now. And you're just like, all right. And he's raising the most money. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. That's scary. He released his tax taxes, which you know, they've been asking Trump to to release his taxes for, for years now, mm-hmm. right? At this point of like, oh, the president must release their taxes or whatever. Why? I don't really care. I don't oh, care no, about I either. I don't care. Like when Bernie Sanders was like, I'm going to come out and release my taxes. And he's like, I'm going to do it on April 15th, so which, was, which was yesterday. Right. You want to take a stab at what was in those taxes and why he shouldn't have released us? The same way Trump should, didn't didn't and shouldn't have released those. What? That he's rich? Yeah. Let me tell you something, if you didn't know this already. In order to run for president, <laughs> you have to be rich. In the history, in our history, no president has ever been working class. Ever. No. Right? No, no I, I, I can't remember one. In order to get through all of that, to campaign, to be on all, you know, yeah. you have to be rich. And that's just the world that... The country that we live in. So he reported of making over a million dollars last year, right? And paying about 26% in taxes. Uh, now, here's the problem I have with socialism. Because most every socialist wants taxes raised to 70%. So if you're making a million, Bernie. Burn, uh, dog. Uh, that, you're going to feel means, the burn. <laughs> yeah. It means you're going to be taking 700000 away from you. 
his statement afterwards, you know, because after he released the thing and everybody was like, oh, shit, you've made a lot of money in the last five years. Because it was in since that last election, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, that's where he grew a name and a brand and yeah, sold and books and talks and you know, speeches. Speech. Speaking yeah. engagements. Talks. Yeah. talks. <laughs> They're in talks. You want to come do a talk? I get asked all the time. You want to come do a talk? You want to come do a talk at our thing? Sure. Sure, why not? Sure, I'm good at it. So you know? he said, look, I, I've become very fortunate later on in life. Yeah. And, uh, but he, he made it clear, which I, I found this interesting, that he made it clear to say in the statements, I came from nothing and was able to build up my wealth and do this other thing and be you know i'm unbelievably fortunate now okay but that's kind of what the american dream is and that's what capitalism is right that's not what socialism is exactly so if everybody's giving away 70 percent of their income all of the time mm -hmm. what is the motivation for becoming rich and, and and doing that i i don't see it to be honest with you so that's little twist and turn of, of him, you know, releasing these taxes and then c coming back to say this, I think is going to come back and haunt him in these debates where oh, yeah. it's going to be like, Hey man. But the problem with, with these debates and with all the people that are going to be on these, these stages, Trump included, they're all rich. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for everybody to say that you're working for the, the, the working class men and women and all that other shit, like it's not really true. Uh, and I I'm, don't, I don't ever hear think it. that. No, I don't either. And I don't, care or anyone at home like no don't ever think for one second that they're actually worried about you yeah so don't don't sell me class. your your socialism here even trump by the way yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't you know by going out and creating jobs which is trump has done and what the numbers came in last week that it was the lowest unemployment rate in 59 years 59 years that's how you can show me that you care that's mm -hmm. it if everybody's working and the jobs are great, that that's that's how you can show me that you actually care. The the other of it, like don't tell me that, you know. Yeah, I, I don't want to hear the the rest of it. But by going out and showing, hey man, I'm bringing jobs back to the economy. That's really all I give a shit about. Absolutely. Um, what I the, the other thing that was fascinating that that popped up immediately afterwards was uh, they the same day that you know Burn Dog released his taxes. Bird, Bird dog. dog millionaire. Okay. Um, <laughs> Goldman Sachs came out and released their report of what they thought financially was going to happen over the next, you know, year and a half. Okay. And obviously, we have a presidential election, uh, November twenty twenty, and they said, "Look, we're banking now. If if we had to to guess with our wallets and our money, we're saying that Trump is going to get reelected." Yeah. So. Yeah. What I, do you? Th I mean, I think so. What do you think? Anything's possible. Anything's possible. So I, I don't like to like if I if I had to bet in Vegas, like, look, the odds are on, on Trump. Uh, you know, obviously, but if you wanted to win getting reelected, who would you? Now, if I'm in Vegas, I th I'd throw <clears throat> just because it's everybody gets so fascinated about someone until they find out who they really are. Mm -hmm. Probably throw a little cash on that Buddha judge guy from the outside. Um, just for, because from the Democratic pay, side, just because it would pay just off. The I don't think he's going to win. I, mm -mm. I'm with Goldman Sachs on this one, where I think if the economy stays strong, uh, jobs and all that other stuff, I, I don't think Americans will switch presidents just because. Hey, we're going to switch, and that's it. Like right. it'd be really, really hard to beat back these numbers of people that are working and all this shit. Because I, I haven't seen anything like this in my lifetime, where every single person is working as a job. Yeah. So as long as that stays strong, I think I think Goldman Sachs is right. If there's a sudden downturn in the economy or, you know, we get into some escalated trade war with China, uh, that, that could have, you know, a massive impact on it. But other than that, you know, stay the course, let these guys tear each other's faces off, and then, boom, you go in there, you slide in there next year and see what happens. Yeah. You know, there's the reason why I, I don't really like to predict these things is people can come out of nowhere like an Obama, uh, like a Trump. And, you know, in in a year, a year and a half, 14 months, you're able to turn a nation in your favor just because of how fast the news cycles are mm -hmm. and how fast people love a great story or, you know, a sudden front runner and all that stuff. And momentum could push you through at the last second. 
you know, with Trump and, and with when Obama first got got elected. I thought that's what happened where I was like, oh, man, I, both of those, you know, I was still surprised by, even though I, I called both of those. I was like, yeah. ah, I, man, I can't believe that actually shook out. I mean, there's there's days I wake up today where I'm like, I can't still can't believe Trump is actually president. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's really crazy to wrap you my mind around you and a lot of other people. Not only that, but like, <laughs> you know, with 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 Goldman Sachs saying he's going to get reelected. That would be eight years of, of Donald Trump in, in the White House. And it, look, it'd be rad. I just it's so far out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. That would be crazy to me. To me, it's like, would that quell? Every way, the craziness. I don't know. The re-election, I would hope, would be the like, okay, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, yeah. can we? Can we get over this? Clearly, you're in the minority. All right, all this shit happened. You have this many candidates, and you still can't, right? Yeah. Can we just? At CNN, by the way, still hanging on to that Mueller report. I was, at, I was at the gym yesterday and it was oh, yeah. still going on at like they still have questions yeah it was six they still have lots of questions it was questions. 6 p.m. and that's usually your top time for news you know obviously 6 and 11 and it's just like man that is still your top story right now uh, because no one else is talking about that and they, they just have nothing You're else definitely done with that to yeah. hang on to yeah. uh, pretty crazy you have a crime corner James Ooh. <laughs> oh <laughs> Crime corner, crime corner. Sorry, I just crime corner. Yeah, I really want to get that in, you know. Crime corner. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta stop talking in my crime corner. Yeah, that needs to be a clean break. Yeah, no, I hear you. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, crime corner. Okay, there thank you. you. Let's let's up. Let's take it to a an uplifting place. You get know, it? I've been. You know how it goes. You've been all over the map today, James. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a real person, okay? Yeah. You're like, I can't be anything else. You're like Carmen San Diego. You know, where in the world are you today? <laughs> it's so stupid. Where in the world You're are you? You're so stupid. Carmen San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to start with that. Sure. Um, and I'd also, I need to give my shout outs. This one, a couple, a team had worked on this one. A team of your precincts? Yeah, John Browley. Okay. Eric from Michigan, I'm guessing Eric Benway, maybe it's you, 187 PB, and then the real Loch Nessie, ah. uh, Janessa, who, by the way, I think we would probably be friends. <laughs> so what up, girl? Uh, bartends, runs marathons, roots for the saints, drinks, <laughs> paints herself weird colors, does cosplay. I think I kind of like you. Roots for the saints. She's from Louisiana, it looks like. I wonder like. if she went to the tailgate. Maybe. What's her real name? Janessa. Okay. She, cute, blonde. You would know. All right. Anyway, they all worked on this together, so thank you guys. Um, and it's just an uplifting tale of a woman, a boy, her boy, and a dog, you know? Yeah. So a woman does karate, son gets naked, and then a dog steals cornbread. All at Walmart. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't worry. I'll break it down. Yeah, you don't need to. No. I will. I just I got I a lot of questions. Because I know you have questions. I know you have questions. questions. And this here. was just a fun day at Walmart that everyone had. And I'm jealous of anyone that was there. Right? Yeah. So Lisa Smith and her son, 25-year-old son, Benny Vaughn. Um, are under arrest for causing a scene, a little bit of a scene at Walmart. A so, yeah, just a just a fun little time. I mean, nothing. Nobody got hurt, but they just had a fun little time. And their dog Bo was with them. Ah. He's also in the mix. Okay, so um, <laughs> officers said a woman brought uh, her dog into the store without the leash, so the dog is running around, of course, with the son. Yep. Um, the dog grabs a box of cornbread muffin mix mm. and is walking out with it. So the dog's stealing the cornbread. Okay. That's a number one, right? Is thing that a that felony or? Gosh, I don't know how you would persecute prosecute. the dog. Prosecute. Prosecute a dog, yeah. Yeah. That'd be weird. When, um, when officers responded, they said that uh, they arrived to find mom. Uh-huh. Mom Smith, 
tearing apart displays at the store. So for some reason, she's pissed. I don't know how this happens. What, but was, the she, dog what was she tearing stealing apart, you know? Displays. You know, when you first walk in, there's the cup. It's uh-huh. Easter, for example. There's a big uh, bunny and then all the cupcakes around it, and they do like an Easter display. Gosh, and she was tearing that apart. She's tearing that apart. Okay. Okay, when the cops come. Now, the dog is somewhere else in the store, right? Took the cornbread somewhere. Sure, yeah. Uh, Probably outside. So right. the dog goes out the front door with the cornbread. Okay. Um. So she's tearing apart the displays. Uh, and then, so Bo... Bo got up. Bo, the dog left with the cornbread. Um, dog's out the store. Dog dog's is out gone. of the store. Yeah. When did Do- the kid? Dog's out of the store. When did the kid get and then naked? The kid, uh, so meanwhile, while 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 she, so they get her outside. She's tearing the displays apart. They get her outside the store. Finally, yeah. she starts doing karate moves. While the woman, the woman, okay, while the. Just karate, karate, karate. Sure. Saying that the whole time. Meanwhile, Van, the son, allegedly strips off all his clothes inside the Walmart okay. while she's outside doing the karate. He's inside naked, exposing himself to customers. How now? How old is the son at this? Twenty five. Ah, there we go. Youngster. Yeah. Wow. Little kid <laughs> on a leash, right? <laughs> um. So officers were unable to subdue the mom, obviously, because her karate was. Uh, her karate skills unparalleled. Yeah. So, and she allegedly kicked out a patrol car window once she was inside. So, so she's I'm guessing trained. She's trained. actually trained. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's n- probably not some kind of PCP uh, bath salt. It probably is just her karate skills and her training and her training put into good use. Yep. Um. So, and the, and the police said Van uh tried to cover himself up with clothes from the Walmart racks. Once they arrive. Well, so then he grabs. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And then when the officers approach him, he attempts to run them over with a motorized scooter. Oh, so he, he had gotten so on he, a motorized so scooter he, at that point. Yeah. Naked on the scooter, grabbing clothes to cover himself. I mean, there's just it's just this scene. Sure. Again, jealous of anyone who was able to have that brighten up their day a little bit. Because really, when you go into Walmart. It's not a great day. Right. Ah. It's not a beautiful time. It's part of your day. You know, it's part of your day. It's part of your day and it's going to take a long time and it's just a, you know. Yeah. Not a. I pray sometimes for a little bit of excitement in there. I I take the day. I I plan on taking a day off when I go into a Walmart, especially a super center. You cannot just run in real quick. No. Um, So attempted to run them over. uh, However, they were able to stop the scooter. So. Oh, they were. Yeah, it doesn't really go that that forcefully fast. It's really just to scoot around the store. Sure. Can I ask a can I ask a question here? You can ask is, one is question. It my, is now. It my turn. One question. What what was the <laughs> the final result of the dog? <laughs> oh geez. Oh, police did not charge Bo. Okay, good. He good, was let good. off with a warning. They said. Ah, uh, you have to. Don't. Don't. Don't steal. No, them. bad dog, right? Yeah, Something yeah. like this. Don't steal any more cornbread mm-hmm. out of the Walmart. Yeah. Smith was charged, the mom charged with disorderly conduct. Sure. And being awesome at karate. I didn't know that could be a charge, but they did charge her with that. Um, and this kid has been charged with lewd and lascivious behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, he, that sounds like a family I want to be a part of. Yeah. And again, that's just an uplifting tale, a fun little Saturday or Sunday with the family at Walmart. When you're smoking meth with your mom, and yeah. then you guys decide yeah. to get in the car and take the dog and go to Walmart. And get some cornbread, man. Going to be honest, that sounds like a good time. It really does. Jump on some scooters, get naked, do some karate. Again, get some cornbread. Yeah. Kick out a police car. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. you really did it all. Yeah. It's, I mean... You really did it. It's all. difficult to kick out a police car window. I I don't even, like. I didn't know it was possible. Didn't know it was possible. Not in today's world. I would have thought oh, no, they're, they're yeah, bulletproof yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. This woman is proving that karate is real. Uh, I look, James. I appreciate that crime corner. That was a big one for me today. Yeah. One of your best. 
Oh, geez. One of your best crime corners, crime corner. Thank you. And thank you to my detectives. Yeah, absolutely. Always out there. Boots Always on out the here. ground. Boots. On the ground. On the ground. On the ground. Sure, sure, sure. This will lead us to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we, James? We shall. I'm going to throw this one out to Tigre. Tiger Woods. Mm. Tiger Woo. Uh, second oldest person ever to win the Masters, only behind Jack Nicholas. Man, I talked about this on our sister show, Drinking Bro Sports. I was um, going to say, yeah. That airs uh, tonight, actually. Uh, same with, with this one, where I that that was the first time I admitted to another man that I cried during a full on cry, full on cried when Tiger Woods won, not because of how hard you know the Masters was and all that other shit, but like everything he had gone through. And I I had said, you know, I I had this conversation with Dan Holloway where, you know, I I I grew up with Tiger. Yeah. 22 years. I mean, it was 97 when he won his first Masters. And I remember the hype around him before he even came in. So even two years before that, there was so much hype around this guy. And, you know, fuck, you spend 22 years of your life seemingly watching somebody, you know, or or you feel like you know him and you don't really know him. And then he goes through all that shit. I did. I, I was the first one who said. I do not think he will ever win a major again. Yeah. I a lot of people I know a lot of sports pundits said this, but I, I just the injuries, the age, the mental aspect of it, golf is incredibly difficult. Uh, I'm great at a lot of sports. I'm terrible at golf. I've never been good at golf. I don't have the patience for it and uh or the mindset t- to do it, you know, to get through that and at 43 years old to to be able to to do that on that stage. And to come from behind and win, I, dude, I started crying. I mean, I've seen that. Red, I've seen him wear that red shirt every Sunday right. for 22 years. Uh, right. You know, and and you expected him to win. I, I was not expecting him to win this at all. Uh, I would have popped on down the bunny trail for that one and uh, and gone. Um, even on that Saturday night, he was still back when Saturday ended and the final round was Sunday. And even though the time got pushed up to like a nine o'clock tea time. I, he was too back. He was two shots off, and I was like, "Nah, this is where he falls off. It, right. he's, he, there's no way he'll, he'll be able to maintain it." And uh, and not only did he improve everyone wrong, but it brought back this weird, like, visceral reaction of, you know, seeing him on Sundays. And I, I never gave a shit about golf. I never watched golf. Right. I never watched golf until Tiger Woods. And right. not only did I watch it, but every hole was un- unbelievable to watch. And I, I literally started crying, and I was like, "Holy shit, man!" Um, it was like a some strange way. It felt like a childhood hero, like finally, you know, getting back on top. Where a, a lot of a lot of athletes just don't. You know, I remember because I loved Jordan as a kid as well, and Jordan came back with the Wizards, and it was just sad watching him. And that's the way I felt about Tiger the last few years, where it was sad watching yeah, him, and I was thought like, it, "Fuck!" It would just sort of fade away, yeah. right? And you're like, "Well." He just kept getting worse and worse, and then it was done. Right? Yeah. And, and th- so, yeah, that's, I do that's what love, I thought. I do love a. Now the rest of the golf season is going to be unbelievably fascinating. Where it's just like, all right, can he win another one? Can we win another major? Because I the, the the courses he's playing, he's won before, and he's won in record fashion. So now that 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 mental aspect, that mental hurdle has been crossed, man, maybe he goes on to dominate again. And I hope so. It would be awesome to see. So either way, at 43 years old, Tiger, rev fig of the day, my man. That was, I did not think I would see that in my lifetime. What do I always say? What? <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy, yeah. right? <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a better guy, more deserving. No, but I do, uh, I do. He's paid his. As I joke about that, he's but paid you know, his dues again, you, as you said, he wasn't touching kids. He has his fucking issues, but they're not like he's not killing people, hurting people, whatever. No. He messed his own family up. He didn't yeah, mess anybody else's exactly. up. So it really was his own life, right? He yeah. wasn't fucking with anybody else. So yeah. I have to say you did it to yourself and you brought yourself out and fucking A. Yeah. I have to commend that, and right? The, no matter what it was. Completely. And the, and the, other, the, the other thing I'll say about this before we get out of here is um, even if he doesn't win again, this win was oh. so spectacular. 
that it doesn't matter. And that's the amazing thing of yes. it is that you, you know, and that was part of why I, why I started crying exactly. too. Where I was just like, he just didn't want to fade away. So now it's like the pressure's off a little bit. Yeah. He can either go off into the sunset if he wants, or he can still play, but people are like, well, you, the, they can be like, well, he is getting older, blah, blah, blah. But he had that one. Right. And everyone will remember yes. this. Yes. And that's yes. what yes. he'll be remembered yes. for. And if I were him, what about if I were him, would you just stop? After no. This? No. No. He's look, he's at the top of his game right now. OK. Um, he Look, okay. he won a tournament last year and he looked good coming on. And, you know, that was the other thing that uh, a lot of people were surprised about. And we talked about this in the sports show was he was the odds on favorite in Vegas to win before this started. And right, right after the last match of last year. They had put him, because he won the last tournament of last year, right? Mm-hmm. And, and immediately afterwards, they were like, oh, he's back. He's the, he was the odds-on favorite in Vegas. Now, Vegas took a bath. That was the worst beating they've ever taken on, on a golf match in the history of sports betting. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people bet on Tiger. Where it was just like, right. hey, man. One guy won $1.19 million, uh, off of this casino, and just somebody strolled in, put 100 on it, man. It was... Uh, like 11 to one odds or 12 to one or whatever it was. But uh, yeah, uh, I, it was, it was awesome to see. And I, I will fully admit on air, I broke down and cried and it was a sight that I was not anticipating ever seeing again. And it was rad. It was a childhood thing. And uh, it was just great to see. And if look, if he doesn't take off that hat at the end and you see that he's, you like go, he's crazy the same bald, age. he looks he's the, the same, same age. age, the same all of it looks the same, the same outfit, same body type, everything. Until he took that hat off, you're like, yeah, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a divot you cannot replace <laughs> on this fairway. You can. I don't know why. Pe- you can. Just you shave can it. Bosley. Go bald. All you of his best. Bosley. Listen, if you're rich, no, you, you can't. do not have to go bald. No. LeBron. Look at LeBron. He can't do anything about that. He's tried for years. Well, at least I, he's got a lot. He, sh- he would be clean bald. At least he has a little bit to work with. His former uh, best friends are, Le- are uh, Barkley and Jordan. Mm-hmm. Both are clean bald. Like, hey, just do it. Do it. Just do it. Just Nike. Just do it, man. <laughs> Anyways, James, this was fun. I'm glad we got you out of your funk there at the beginning. Thank you. Yeah, you know, maybe this week I should just not look at Instagram. Or just start following more positive people. You ever and that'll about that? piss me off. Why are you so positive? You rich? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I do, there's nothing. If I'm in the mood to be pissed. Yeah. You will piss me off. Yes. I'll be pissed. Yes. Uh, anyways, and, let's go. And la- yeah, before we get out of here, uh, Gordon Wagner, I'm sorry we stopped saying you like it on the show. But again, the audio and video formats are now different. Uh, watch the subscribe to the video show on YouTube. Yeah. So that's what I'll we're, work we're it doing. In somehow. I'll work it in somehow. You yeah, guys. you work it Don't in. Don't worry. I'll work- it'll, it'll be back, Gordon Wagner. We just want you to know that. He was our day one homie on YouTube who would always give a shout out the time codes of when you said you like it. And uh, it'll be back. It'll be back sometime. Should I give him one at the very end? Good. Let's see if he finds this. If he finds this on the video, true True, homie. True true homie. True homie. God. Are you (laughs) right? For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. the Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. Good night, everyone. Subscribe on YouTube. Good night.